trends. Hello. Today we will look at the basic principles of animation. This is the foundation on which most animation and techniques used by motion designers in their work are built. So let's not wait and let's dive into After Effects. Let's start with the first principle of animation. We have timing, spacing and rhythm. Timing refers to the duration of the animation. Spacing is the distance between keyframes and rhythm is how the animation moves with a certain rhythm, whether the same or different, which depends on the animation, but there should be some rhythm. So, using a simple animation as an example, we will explore the first principle. Let's just set two keyframes. And let's just animate this key. Oh, this shape. Here, we see it moving at a certain speed, but we can change the distance between keyframes and our shape will move faster. We can also make this animation slower. This is roughly what timing looks like and also to show spacing. That is the number of keyframes that occur over a period of time. To do this, you can add the try time effect which will show that we have, for example, 12 frames occurring per second. And we will see that this is already insufficient because the animation looks choppy. We can set it to 60. The animation will be very smooth. And also the rhythm. We can, for example, place a keyframe here. and create a small easing and our animation will move with a certain rhythm and repeat this for example back to the same intervals by adding a few more details about the process such as the importance of timing and spacing in creating a smooth and natural motion and how these principles can be applied to various types of animations to enhance their visual appeal and effectiveness this is approximately what the first principle of animation looks like. The second principle of animation is easing, that is, animation graphs. And let me show you more visually what approximate animation graphs can look like. There can be a large number of them. I will just show the basic ones that I use in some of my projects. Let's also animate, select all these four shapes. And let's animate them simply to the right. Let's select all these keyframes. No, let's not do that. We'll leave one as just linear. And if we open the animation graph, it will be simply linear, meaning it will move straight with a constant speed continuously. For the second one, we will press F9. Our shape is already moving like this. It speeds up. Here is the highest speed, becomes smoother, reaches zero, stops. Then we will also press F9 and we will create such an animation graph. We will select this key position and simply drag it to the center. Our animation graph will look like this. Our circle will move very slowly and then it will have a very high speed and again the same, slow speed and zero. And for example, something like this. The speed starts very high, right away, immediately, and it just smoothly goes to zero. All four objects will cover the same distance in the same time, but with different animation graphs. So this is linear. A smooth set, very sharp. It starts with high speed. I can suggest that this one, for example, comes faster, or this one comes faster, but in the end, we see that there is still a little movement, and while there is this movement, this circle catches up with it, and they end up in the same position. 
The third principle of animation is mass and weight. That is, it depends on how our animation is executed. It will depend on how this object looks, how it feels overall, how heavy it is, and how quickly, how heavily it falls, for example. For this, we will also animate our three objects. Let's press F9 on all these keys, and we will create such an animation graph. You can even stretch it a bit. And a little... We will make a smooth decline. And this will result in such an animation. We will also animate the second object, but in a slightly different way. We will make a smaller number of keys, also at 9, and we will make the same animation graph. This object here feels a bit different from the others, almost, as if it is significantly heavier and has noticeably fewer impacts when compared to the rest. Additionally, let us proceed to animate the third one using the exact same animation graph that we have been utilizing. And the distance between the keyframes is a bit bad. And here we see that this feels the lightest, while the last one feels the heaviest. Although we could add even more bounces to this one, a bit more to this one as well, and add this amount to this one the difference would be even more noticeable. The next basic principle of animation is anticipation. That is, the prediction of movement. A preparatory movement before the main animation. Because, for example, when we move, I don't know, a leg or a head, we usually make some kind of preparatory movement. We don't just move from the start and go straight there. We like lift our leg and then make the main movement so this is the kind of preparatory movement that should happen before the execution of the main movement so overall animation simply looks more realistic so this will clearly add some professionalism to your animation i added two objects here but let's delete them and take these two objects from the previous animation and right here, for example, as an illustration, we see that I have this ball. When we begin the process, the object starts to shake immediately. To illustrate this further, let's take a moment to duplicate the object and move it over to the right side of the screen. As we do this, we will turn off the visibility of the first object to focus on the new one.
Next, we will set a keyframe at this position to mark the starting point of our animation. Moving forward, we will set a second keyframe, which will help us define the path of movement. In this case, we are making a preparatory movement that goes straight down. This step is crucial, as it sets the foundation for the animation's flow. Now, let's take a closer look at the animation graph. By examining the graph, we can see how the movement is structured and how it adds a layer of complexity to the animation. The graph provides a visual representation of the motion, making it easier to understand the dynamics at play. Doesn't it look more interesting now? The changes we've made enhance the overall animation, making it more engaging and visually appealing. Let's allow it to go further down for more expressiveness. What if we compare with the first one? The second animation clearly looks more realistic, more lively, and more interesting. And the last principle of animation is arcs. That is, all objects usually move, not in straight lines, but in curved arcs, both in motion design and in real life. This way, the object will look more natural, the animation will be more realistic, and it will be more aesthetically pleasing. And let me show you how it looks in practice. Specifically, we set it up, and also create the animation of our jumps. Easy easy, that is F9 for us. And we take this tool called Convert Vertex 2 and we place it on any point. And our animation movement will turn into smoother lines. But now we need to create these arcs from them. Specifically, they should look approximately like this. We just pull. Here we do it like this. This is how our animation looks at the moment. We create animation graphs the same as before, but with one nuance that I will show now. These key positions should be ours, or rather, we highlight them to start. Keyframe velocity. And we raise them a little up so that in this position, more precisely in this upper position, our object does not stop but continues to move. This is necessary for this. And here is what we have. And if we do all the same indeed just without arcs, here is what we will get. Well, it absolutely looks nothing at all like real life, so we use this principle and the method of arcs, and we will get this kind of animation. I remind you that these bounces, for example, should follow the principle of such an arc, that is, a semicircle. Maybe I didn't show it perfectly here. I just want to quickly demonstrate a visual example of how it should approximately look. Maybe the spacings here are a bit off. Perhaps this should happen a little faster. Something.
something like that. Or perhaps maybe just stop a little bit less. In the air, yes. You can adjust them like this for yourself. The essence is understood, it should look something like this. Something like this. So that's all for today. I think that if you enjoy this lesson, I will record the next 5 principles of animation, because there are exactly 10 of them. There are actually 12, but I think we will cover the main 10 together. That's all for now. So, as always, see you in the next lesson. Thank <laughs> you.